Hi, my name is Margaret Posch. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to compound assignment operators. Compound assignment operators are used to modify variables based on the current value. I could have, for example, a variable and I could add something, subtract something, multiply, etc. So the square here is a placeholder for a binary operator which could be plus, minus, times, etc. These kinds of modifications of variable values are so frequent that Java gives us a very nice, concise way to update those variables with a compound assignment operator. And this is the combination of the assignment operator and the binary operator that does the modification. So let's look at a couple examples. Let's assume for now the operator is plus. I'm going to create a variable. It's an integer variable named score. It is initialized with zero. And I'm going to use that as my variable to be modified. The operand can be just about anything as long as it evaluates to the appropriate type. And that means in our case it has to be an integer because my variable is an integer. It could be, for example, an integer literal, like 7. It could be an integer variable, like score, or any other integer variable. It could also be an expression, like 3 times 2. It could also be a method that returns an integer, let's say, from scanner, the next int method that allows us to read in an integer from the keyboard. Now, of course, the operator doesn't have to be a plus. It could be minus, could be divided, modulus, etc. So here's an example. Let's assume x has the value 13. And now I'm going to evaluate the expression x minus equal 7. That, of course, here is the compound operator. It is equivalent to x gets assigned x minus 7. So if I take 13, I subtract 7 from 13, that gives me the value 6 right here. Here is a second example. Let's say y is 24. Now my expression is right here, y slash equals 6. Once again, these two characters in the middle is the compound operator. They are equivalent to y is y divided by 6. With y being 24, 24 divided by 6 evaluates to 4. Now here a few more examples, but this time it is your turn. So please pause the video, calculate the answer. When you're done, press continue. So let's say z is 10 at the beginning, if I multiply it with 3, it's going to be 30 afterwards. A starts to be 1.5, then we are adding 5.1, and afterwards A is 6.6. .6. Something similar happens to B, which ends up to be 2.1 after subtracting 2.5. C is at the beginning 9, C modulus equals, means C is C modulus 4, which means if I divide C by 4, I take the remainder and assign it to C. So 9 divided by 4 is 2, the remainder is 1, and I'm taking the remainder, which is 1, and I assign it back to C. So my solution here is 1. So let's just imagine the following situation. You set yourself a goal, you're going to run every week 15 miles. And the way you're going to accomplish this goal is you're going to run a couple miles every day and you're going to keep track of how far you've come. So we're going to start by declaring a variable that keeps track of the total miles we ran so far. So it's an integer variable. I name it total and I initialize it with zero because at the very beginning of the week I haven't run yet 
And then there comes Monday and Monday I'm going out, I'm running three miles. So I say, well, my total is my total plus three. On Tuesday, I'm going to run two miles. So my total is total plus two. Wednesday, I don't run at all, so I don't have to write anything. But Thursday, I'm really on a very good day. I'm running six miles. So I say my total is my total plus six. Friday, I do another run, three miles again. Total is total plus three. And Saturday, I'm kind of lazy. I do only a single mile. So I say total is total plus one. Sunday I don't run. Sunday I have other things to do. So at this point I'm going to print out my total. I print out how many miles I was able to do that week and I'm going to use a printf statement. And I say well my total is percent %d because this is a digit, it's a whole number and there goes my total. And we're going to check that out going to compile. There it is. I'm going to run. It says total is 15. So this was a very good week. I reached my goal. I feel good about it. Now one thing I want to point out is there is a great repetitiveness. It always says total is total, total is total. And as a matter of fact, this is a very frequent pattern that I have a variable and I keep adding to that variable. And it is so frequent that Java provides a separate operator. So instead of saying total is total plus three, I could also say, and I'm going to leave that in a comment on the right side so you can see what it stands for. I could say total plus equals three. What that means is total is total plus three, or here spelled out total is total plus three, hundred percent equivalent. Now you might wonder why should I use a new operator if it's doing the same thing? No, this looks, oops, there we go. This looks more professional. You know, good programmers like to use that because it's easy, it is concise, it is fast, less typing, and the moment your eye gets used to this new compound operator, they're just fantastic. People like them. And so it's important that you know them so you can read other people's code. It's also important so your code looks a little bit more professional. So we're going to change all of these. And I'm just going to say, well, this is going to be a plus equal. I just leave the comment on the first one. You can figure it out for the other ones on this by yourself. So I'm going to change all of those and one more right here. And just for the proof of concept, I'm going to compile again and I'm going to run again. And of course, the result should be the exact same. And here it shows me my total is still 15. Nothing changed functionality wise, but my code looks different. So at this point, I'm going to erase my main method here and I make room for a new example. So let's imagine you have $10, you're heading to a grocery store, you're buying a couple items and as you put your things in your cart, you always uh, subtract the price from the money you have left. So I start by declaring a variable. I say it's a type double and I just call it cash. And at the beginning I have $10. And as I put items in my cart, there's less and less money left. I see some grapes. I like the grapes. I put them in my cart. And because those grapes are 350, I am going to subtract that amount. I say, well, my cash is now what it used to be, minus 350. So as I keep going, I see a baguette and I like it, I put it in my cart. Baguette costs $2 and so um, I have whatever I used to have minus $2. And the last thing I really want to buy is some orange juice. It's nice, fresh, squeezed orange juice and they charge me $2.70 for it. So 
I have what I used to have minus 270. I'm going to use a printf statement system out printf. Let's say cache left. And now I want to have a dollar sign printed and a percent dot 2f. The percent dot 2f is a format specifier that tells Java we're going to provide a floating point number and we want it displayed with two digits after the decimal point. So here I'm going to provide my floating point number and that of course is my variable cache. I'm going to compile and run and it shows me my cache left was $1.80 so everything is good. Once again, I want to point out the familiar pattern. So we have cache is cache minus, cache is cache minus, etc. Because we are always updating our variable. And once again, I'm going to substitute that with a compound operator. I'm going to leave the original code in a comment for you so you have something to compare. And now we're going to write cache minus equal 3.5. And I'm going to do the same thing for the two following statements. And one more time here, I'm going to compile. I'm going to run. Functionality did not change. My code changed. So cache minus equals something means cache gets assigned cache minus something. You can do this for a whole variety of operators, times, divided, modulus, etc. But this is all I wanted to show you for now. See you next time.